Hello again, it's uh, Paul Beckwith. So I'm continuing um, my discussions on the top 10 weather and climate events of this record setting year 2020. Right now in Ottawa, you know, it's uh, December 24th, should be well below zero, but we're, it's actually eight degrees today and uh, we're, we're, it's raining, it's pouring. And it's going to be pouring for the next uh, 12, uh, at least uh, maybe maybe 16 hours. We're going to probably get, you know, about um, anywhere from 30 to 50 millimeters of rain. 50 millimeters of rain is about uh, two inches or so. And uh, because we had some cold days uh, just uh, this week, uh, the, you know, last week, the ground is frozen. So this rain will likely cause some basement flooding and so on because it'll just, uh, it, it won't be able to be soaked up and absorbed into the ground. So it'll just uh, run to the lowest spots and, uh, you know, cause uh, lots of flooding problems in underpasses and people's basements and things. Um, so anyway, let me continue to where I left off in the last video. So talking about 2020 being possibly, possibly becoming the hottest year on record. If not the hottest, it'll be second hottest or third hottest after the record of the, the current record was in, in, in 2016. 2016, there was a very strong El Nino. Okay, that's the red curves, the red years. Uh, but this year we're in the blue, the La Nina, and yet we're almost, we're going to set a record here, probably, you know, or be very close to the 2016 record. And the reason, I think, is because of the lack of aerosols in the atmosphere this year from industrial shutdown uh, due to the coronavirus. Okay, and then I was showing um, the prediction from the Goddard Institute of Space Science, the, the temperature prediction setting a record year, but since this was tweeted out on uh, December 14th, the temperature of the ocean has dropped and the air has dropped even a bit more, so we may not set the record. We might be second or third. And this is very surprising because the number of solar sunspots is extremely low. This was the beginning of 2020, six months through, and as we near 2021, Okay, we're, we're, uh, we had a bit of a rise, but again, so we're, the variation of solar intensity is about 0.1% from the drop to the peak. So we're, uh, but, so there's less energy coming from the sun, less solar energy, but we're still setting record temperature year because the greenhouse gases are just overwhelming this, uh, this effect. And uh, this is the ONI index. and. So if you're above zero, it's an El Nino. Red is strong El Nino years. So 91, 92, 1997, 98, 2015, 16, when we set the existing temperature record. And uh, here we were, so when we started, um, this is January, 2020, we started in a very weak um, El Nino. And then since then, as the years progressed, it's dropped and we're in a La Nina here. And yet we're still likely to set, uh, you know, a new temperature record, at least or at least be in the top three. So this is very unusual. This is the um, distribution of the heat where we compare 2016 to 2020. And what you can see is we'll go here first to 2020. Okay, so this is the temperature distribution. This is from December of 2019 to November of 2020. This is the anom temperature anomaly versus the baseline 1951 to 1980, and it's 1.05 degrees globally above this baseline for the last uh, 12 months. The, um, okay, so, uh, but if you want to compare this baseline to the 1880 to 1910 baseline, you need to add 0.3 degrees Celsius. So that would be 1.35. If you want to compare this number to 1750, which was the original definition of pre-industrial, you need to add another 0.2 um, or 0.3. So if you add 0.3, going taking this number back to turn of the century, 1880 to 19. 10 or so, it would be 1.35, adding the 0.3 to this. And if you go back to 1750, you would need to add another 0.2 or 0.3. So we're already over 1.5 globally. If you take the original baseline for a pre-industrial, you know, the definition of 1750, but the baseline's been shifted 
Um, I won't get into that, but this is the distribution. So what you can see is it is a weak, El weak La Nina here because the Pacific Ocean is, is neutral here. It's not warmer. And as a result, it's almost like a divided uh, Earth. This hemisphere, the, the, the Western hemisphere, is, is, uh, is, is uh, not as warm as the Eastern hemisphere. Look at the temperatures in the Arctic over Siberia. Huge temperature anomalies here. This is 4 to 6.2 degrees Celsius, 2 to 4 degrees, over 2 degrees is all these red areas. Okay, so this is huge warming here, but not so much here. Of course, the continents are a lot warmer than the oceans and the anomalies. So this is in 2020. And now if we look at 2016, when we had an El Nino year, that very strong El Nino year, the Pacific Ocean is very warm near the equator. And you can see that the warming is sort of the same in the Western Hemisphere versus the Eastern Hemisphere. Okay, still lots of warming in the Arctic, warming in the con much warming over the continents versus the, the oceans, but you can see it's sort of balanced here. In, but here we have definitely, you know, definitely much more eastern warming, western hemisphere less because we're in a La Nina year. Now, if you take the difference between the two, the anomaly, so this is uh, the annual December to November 2020 numbers, and this is the anomaly versus 2016. You subtract it. What you can see is this here. This magnifies what's going on. So uh, northern Asia, much, much warmer. Antarctica, much, much warmer. Um, and uh, here's the, uh, the oceans are much cooler in, along the, in the Pacific, along the equator, and therefore North America is, is uh, much, much uh, cooler um, in 2020 versus uh, 2016. Okay, and again, you know, 2016, you get the warming pattern like this, and 2020, you, uh, you know, you, you get much less warming in the, in the Western Hemisphere. Okay, so... So that's the gist of that. Now let's go to the next thing. Number two on the list is the wild 2020 Atlantic hurricane season. We had an extraordinary 30 named storms, which is the highest on record in 2020. 13 of those were hurricanes. That's the second highest on number on record. And six of them were major hurricanes tied with the second highest on record. A normal year, an, an average year, would be 12 named storms, were 30 this year. Six hurricanes were 13 this year, more than double. And three major hurricanes would be normal. We've got six this year, double. So this year is very notable, not just for record number of named storms, but for the record number of rapidly intensifying storms. We had 10 storms that intensified extremely rapidly, setting records. We had a record number of landfalling U.S. named storms. That was 12 of them. And we had a record number of landfalling U.S. hurricanes. There were six of them. Every single mile of the mainland U.S. coast from Texas to Maine was under a watcher warning related to tropical cyclones at some point in 2020. U.S. hurricane damage exceeded 37 billion, which is you know, the eighth highest. There wasn't any single Katrina or Hurricane Sandy um, there, were, there were a lot of storms, but not a single one which, which bumped the numbers up well over 100, 100 billion. Um, two Category 4 hurricanes hit Central America in November. Okay, Hurricane Iota was the largest Category 5 storm ever recorded in the Atlantic, and Ita, um, the deadliest tropical cyclone worldwide in 2020, happened. Okay, uh, so let's have a look at... Uh, you know, some of these storms. So if, this is the Wikipedia site, 2020 Atlantic hurricane season. And I'm gonna show you the summary of where all the storms are and also some, some stats on the storm. So, so here's the uh, map. This shows the tracks of all tropical cyclones in the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season. So many form off Africa and then they swing around up here. Okay, many in the uh, many are also forming in the um, Gulf of Mexico and in the Caribbean region, you know, and they basically curve up this way. Okay, so that's a key. Uh, so lots of storms, very active year because of course the water temperatures are warm. Um, this is um, showing one point on September 14th. There were five storms active. There was one 
five tropical cyclones simultaneously, one here. This is uh, Paulette, which uh, sucked in the wildfire smoke, which I showed you uh, previously. There's one, another one here, another one here. Um, one, two, three, four, and then there's one over here in the far right. Okay, so five, five simultaneous cyclones. These are the tropical watches and warnings through the season um, in the U.S. So all of these regions here, this is storm surge warnings is the pink, hurricane warnings is the orange, and tropical storm warnings are the yellows. Okay, so a record-breaking season. Um, this is the timeline of the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season, starting with Arthur. Um, okay, and what it does is it shows you this is May through October, so the longer the line here, the longer the duration of the storm. These are tropical depressions, is the light blues, okay, uh, tropical storms, the, the sort of, uh, the, the, the uh, other blues here, okay, um, category ones, the, the light yellows, twos, threes, fours, etc. So here's the main storms here. Okay, so this is sort of the timeline showing where they all occurred, and there's more details here on specific storms, uh, date formed, and you know storm number up to 30. Okay, going well into the into the Greek letters, and you know if you go to Earth Null School and just click on Ocean Sea Surface Temperature Anomaly, um, and set the date to what you want. I'm looking. This is September 18th, and you can see the sea surface temperature anomaly. Uh, you know, five degrees Celsius warmer than, than normal, okay? Um, and, uh, you know, you can see the warmth, the red, the warmth in the Gulf of Mexico, the warmth, you know, off the U.S. coast, off the coast of Florida, you know, and all the, the warmth in the, in the Caribbean regions. Okay, so the next event for 2020 is the, we had record high atmospheric carbon dioxide levels occurring in the atmosphere despite record emissions drops. Okay, so here's the global energy-related CO2 emissions. This is gigatons of CO2, and this is over different years. So we had a little dip here during the Great Depression, World War II here, another dip here, the second oil shock, the Arab oil embargoes in the late 70s, early 80s. We had the financial crisis in 2008, and here we have the coronavirus dip, the virus dip. So we set a record of about 33 gigatons um, about three years ago, and then we've had a little dip. Um, in 2020, we've had a significant dip in the level of CO2 emitted from burning fossil fuels. And this is the change. Um, so this is the the change in a, on a yearly basis. So you can see the dips here, Great Depression, a number of years when it was, uh, a, when, when the change from the previous year was lower, World War II here, the second, the, the second oil shock, um, first oil shock was here in the seven, early 70s, uh, the financial crisis, so one year of dip, and this is so far the, the coronavirus. So the dip is about minus 2.6 gigatons uh, dip occurring here. Okay, so because of restrict, restrictions to curb the coronavirus pandemic, emissions in 2020 declined by 9 to 10 percent in the U.S. and 6 to 7 percent globally, although some of these reductions are offset by carbon released uh, from wildfires. These are the largest annual carbon emissions decline since World War II. They're far more than the 1% global and 6% U.S. emissions drops from the 2008 Great Recession. But carbon dioxide in the atmosphere still rose by 2.6 parts per million um, from 2019. So we reached a level of 414 parts per million. Okay, um, so let's have a look at uh, here. So here's an article um, talking about the coronavirus impact on CO2 emissions, six times larger than the 2008 financial crisis. And you can see the dip here. I showed you this curve and this curve, and you can see the changes, Spanish flu, Great Depression. These, these are the fluctuations in the annual rate of change of primary energy demand. And you can see coal uh, dropping quite significantly and substantially. So 
So thank you for listening and I'll continue uh, in another video.